Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lewis Crocker here in Belfast. Just a couple of days out from the big return at Ulster Hall. How are you doing, Lewis? Doing great, mate. Um, great to be back. Fighting again so soon in Belfast. Um, Ulster Hall is an iconic venue, so hair laden again. Um, it's amazing. What's it like coming back over here? Because I know obviously you're based over in Scotland, over in Airdrie with, with Billy. What's it like coming back here? Do you get the, the old school feel? Oh, it's brilliant, so it is. Um, it's good to see my family and my, my friends when I'm back. Um, I was only back for like, well, like two and a half weeks um, after the last fight there, so before I was back in Scotland again. Um, do you know what I mean? So like, I've spent more time in Scotland than anything recently, but uh, it's great to be back. So it is. How are you finding it, training over there? Is it a little bit different to when you were starting out in your career? Yeah, uh, me and Billy gel lovely, so we do. Um, do you know, he's progressed me in my career just the way I want. Um, I think it's been shown in, in my performances as well. So, um, yeah, big year for, for me and Billy. Um, we've only been together not even a year yet, so I'm looking forward to the future holds. It must, be give, it must give you so much confidence that you're a year into your relationship trainer and, 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 uh, and boxer and you've already produced what you've produced in that short amount of time. What can you produce over a longer term? Exactly. Do you know, like, where am I going to be in a year's time? Maybe, like, uh, two years' time. Like, um, I think I moved him last April or so. Like, so, what's that, like, eight months or something? So, you can you imagine, like, the, the improvements and the big fights and stuff that are going to come. What's the atmosphere in the gym like down there? Because I know Billy doesn't have too many fighters, specifically because he wants to focus on you guys that are at the top of your game. Uh, the atmosphere is brilliant. You know, Billy's brilliant, crack, so he is. Um, he's always laughing and joking, like, so um, there's never a dull moment in the gym anyway. For you, this is probably the biggest fight of your career against Jose Felix. Gary Cully slipped up against him a few months back. Is it very important that you don't make the same mistakes that he made? Of course. Um, You'll be coming in with confidence from from his win over Gary Cully. He's got the upset before, but um, you know he's not going to be victorious on Saturday. That'll be me, and he, especially in Belfast. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, like losing is not an option ever, but especially here. How much do you actually watch an opponent going into a fight? Never. I never watch opponents, um, but I've, I've seen him against Cully because he's watching that live. Like so, apart from that, mate, that's it. When you were watching him live. Did you think at that point it was a potential future opponent? You'd be in the ring with him in a few months' time? Never, no. Um, definitely not, mate. Um, you know, they put the fight to, like, to me, and I was like, yeah, not a problem. And then, you know, fair play to him as well. We made the fight in short notice, like, so um, let's get at it. I spoke to a few of the guys over here, and they're all telling me that Northern Irish boxing is very much on the way up. Not just Northern Irish, Irish boxing's on the way up, and you seem to be getting the big shows over here, match room over here, and the big fight, the fans want to be here and watch the fights. It's, it's a big moment at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, Belfast boxing is like, it's always buzzing, you know. Um, we used to have the Frampton nights, were amazing, like, and they would travel everywhere for Frampton as well. Um, the same as Mick, you had the big nights here, and they would travel for Mick, so. You know, like good performances under the, the matchroom banner and stuff. It, it, like it, it sets me off to have a have a massive, massive career and a massive nights in Belfast. Do you think Belfast is really craving that next star now that obviously Carl's retired and, and Mick's probably nearer the end of his career than he is the star? I think so. Yeah, um, for sure. Especially at welterweight as well. You know, like Frampton was like super bottom to feller. Mick was sort of like like featherweight, super featherweight. Um, we're like they haven't had a welterweight really in a, in a while, do you know what I'm saying? Um, and welterweight division is always always tasty, um, globally, domestically, everything. So, yeah, do you know, like well, who knows what could happen? What are your memories of those early days in Belfast when when Carl was on his way up in particular? Oh, amazing! I was there when he won the world title. Um, I fought. I actually fought under a couple of his cars, but the Windsor Park card as well. Um, I travelled the, the same against Quig and stuff. Um, great night. It was just the atmosphere was always brilliant, mate. And um, I suppose the only thing now is like I can't enjoy a night in Belfast when it, they watch the boxing because they'll always be fighting. You know what I'm saying? So I suppose that's the only time point. But as long as people's come to see me, like I got to complain. When you were watching those fights, was that the feeling you got? I want to be in that position in a few years' time. And now you've achieved that. How does it feel? It feels amazing. That that was always the plan. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, so like I turned pro at 20. And, like it's fluent, you know what I mean? Like the people where I am, like I'm seven years, just like absolutely fluent. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds.
you've obviously got a lot of confidence in yourself, but when you look over those years, did you expect that you'd be in the position you're in today? I, mean, I never. I knew I would get there one day anyway, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I've not achieved anything that I want to, um, but everything's running smoothly so far, so um, I'm in a good position, a uh, good fit Saturday, and it puts me in the next, uh, the next moment in my career. A man that you're constantly linked with is also on the card in Paddy, Paddy Donovan. Do you think that could be a really big fight that we could see even this year? I don't know if it would happen this year, mate. Like, you know, I feel like it's a huge fight that it has to make sense for us both. Like, but um, we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? We're both on uh, trajectories toward like world titles and stuff. So we'll see what happens. Is that the case with those sort of fights? Sometimes it's better to let them build. We've talked about it a lot with Dalton Smith. But you have those big fights when you're ready for them and you can maybe even have it in a stadium or something yeah it's just you know we're both aware how big of a fight that is um like that's a, that's a stadium fight like that's it's not like an undercard fight or anything um and we both would it both need to make sense or it would need to make sense for us both like do you know what i mean um but yeah something for the future definitely the 147 is a packed division right at the top level who in your opinion is the king of that division at the moment worldwide um, Crawford still classes Walter with no, Crawford down without a doubt Crawford's the man do you see that as really the aim right at the top of the hill or is that something that is not in your mind yet it's the end goal like, do you know what I mean uh, I'm not looking at like, for my next fight or thing I'm just, I just want to keep building but like, that's, that's the end goal like, I, want to, I want to win a world title do you think someone like Crawford would still be around when you're right at that top level? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I see Crawford moving up to 154 anyway. Like so, um, but you've like boots and us and stuff there. Um, who else? You've you have loads of good fighters. Um, no, Spence as well. Like, um, but yeah, well, who knows what could happen? Um, keep winning. Uh, keep building up the rankings. We'll see. You've obviously been a part of this scene in Belfast for a long time now. Just wondering if there are any prospects or any young fighters that we should be looking out for from this area of the world. Yeah, um, you've got Connor. Sure you I well, Connor Quinn anyway. Connor Quinn's a, a good shot. Um, flyweight, so he is. And I honestly, I could see him win the world title. He's very, very strong for his weight and stuff. Um, great fighter. And then you've you've so many amateurs as well. You know. Like uh, boxing, Holy Trinity is an amateur, and and like it's exceptional when you go up and you watch the kids. Like so, Belfast boxing is always always booming, so it is. But uh, there's loads coming up through the amateurs as well. Far from prospect, but I know you're close with Kevin Ajarko. What do you think he can produce and achieve in 2024? Big fights for him next again. You know what I mean? He had a great win over Troy Williamson. Troy Williamson's tough as old boots as well, and Kevin box brilliant. And, and he's on the same like thing as me is like we're one of one world titles. You know, I mean, we're both training Holy Trinity together, and so for us both to the be at the stage of your career, it's brilliant to see. You know, we're still great mates, um, and, and it's it's good to see that. You know, we're both achieving what we want to achieve, but we haven't achieved what we're gonna or what to, like. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's great. I, I could see him being in big fights, big fights next. Final final thing for you: prediction for Saturday night. Victory, me with Muhammad is. Good man. Cheers for your time. Thank you, man. Cheers, man.